Welcome everyone, it is SEMA Central right here, SEMA 2014. I'm Dennis Pitsenbarger. To my right, Carmela Pardo, an amazing talent and really kind of an epicenter of all things design. My friend, welcome to SEMA Central. It's great to be here. Thanks a lot. It's, uh, everything is so exciting. This show gets bigger every year when I come here. Um, one of the things I want to talk about with you is congratulating you on your win on Motor City Ma uh, Masters. Uh, amazing team that you came up there. I, I know you were talking to some of the other friends over here, and you said it could have went either way at the very end, but congratulations on that, man. It was great to see you get on, a, on, on kind of a more public stage. Everyone here knows who you are. Everyone in the industry knows who you are, but it was kind of neat to see you go to the general public and people see guys like you and what you do to really bring beautiful cars to the market. Yeah, it was, uh, that, that show actually broke through some of the, the barriers of like automotive design in this industry sometimes can be quite small, but when, a sh when you get involved with a show like that, it helps you get exposure to like the family, you know, the people that are watching. Because sometimes, I'm, you know, I'll be at a 7-Eleven or something, a little kid will go, hey, that's a guy from Motor City Masters. And it's really nice to be able to connect with those kind of people. Yeah, it's neat to see what the average person then can find out how much goes in designing a car. And one of the things I wanted to also talk about with you is, you know, you mentioned before that when we were talking about the difference between design when you started and design now, and it kind of even parallels with things I've done 20 years ago to today, you uh, can really revel in the, in the spotlight that you designed cars with pencil and paper and watched it grow into this, you know, computer age that has just made it so much, I don't know if it's better or worse, but that would be, you know, my question of you. Was it better design with pencil and paper or do you like the technology side of it? Well, I think to answer your question, there's vehicles like the one behind you over there, that uh, 67 Charger and maybe the 67 Mustang that I drive, and those were all done with paper and pencil. They're beautiful cars, and another great example is that Corvette right in front of us, and that is you know, a state-of-the-art computer uh, design vehicle, and, and the advantages with something like that is that you, you, as you design a car like that and you have math data for the surface. You can, you can start, you know, with the engineer's packaging everything. You can do aerodynamic testing. You can do crash. You can do many things simultaneously. And um, the technology is only getting faster and, and more efficient. Is it sometimes hard for you to design a car when I'm sure the aesthetics have to be at least in my mind, I would think it's priority one. You want it to be beautiful. You've designed some of the most beautiful cars that have ever blessed the roads in America, let alone around the world. How do you then deal with the parameters of safety, bumper height? Is that sometimes kind of, is, is it a thorn in your side or is it something that you've just kind of grown to deal with? There's some mornings and afternoons that happen in the studios that we really shouldn't talk about, you know, the wars between uh, engineers and designers because we're trying to hold our own to um, make sure the car looks beautiful and we don't want to compromise, but at the same time you have to be responsible to address all the safety and functional, you know, aspects of the car and, uh, that, I mean, those two working together, if you can get a good car with those two groups happy, I mean, that's, that's a major accomplishment. I, I have to admit that one of the saviors of working on the Ford GT is it ran out of money and they had to cut off my engineering support so the cat was away and the mouse went crazy, you know, and we did what we wanted. And by the time we were done, they brought the engineers back in. It was, the surface was locked in. Well, that, that, in, in that car turned out, one of the most beautiful re revivals of any brand ever. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about with you is, as well is the future of design. Um, you know, when you have ideas that get printed, you know, we had some stuff just recently printed, Motor Trend, um, I know Car and Driver, some of the other magazines, they're always looking at you for the future. Do you worry about, you know, people critiquing that or do you just kind of look at it as, you know what, you have to take it as where this is where design is going? Yes, I do have to be very concerned about what uh, the magazines exposes my new ideas because all my friends are out there in the automotive industry as far as design and um, they're, they're kind of, I know that they're curious to see what I'm thinking and once that gets published, it kind of staples 
the, the level of your ability and your design because you can't sit there and apologize for it or start, you know, telling them that, well, I was doing this, doing that. No, that becomes it. So what you give them and what gets printed is really the way that you're going to be perceived. I got to ask you this. Somewhere in your home, maybe in your small office hidden back in your home in L.A., is there drawings that no one will ever see? Is there, is there always a process of you, you know, uh, some sort of, I don't know, safety deposit box of des designs that you have hidden away somewhere? If I could walk you through my basement, you know, with a, with a headlight, you know, on your head and we could unroll some, some old mylars and, you know, that's what we used to draw on, some full-size tape drawings that have never been unfolded since the 80s. There's a lot of stuff down there, you know. I, I would say that the world only sees maybe 5% of less of the art and design that goes into vehicles because um, it takes a lot of iter iterations, you know, before um, everybody's confident enough to say this is the direction that we're going to go. This is going to what's represent our company and this is what can be feased out. And um, a lot of times those, um, those old sketches don't get saved. You know, I worked in, I worked at GIA, uh, you know, through the 90s and I had a flat file. I don't know what people know that is, but that's where you put your drawings. And I pulled the bottom flat files out one day and those Jajaro sketches at wow. the bottom in Kansan. And let me tell you, I wanted to leave with them, but <laughs> I, I, I did and I left them there. And I don't know where they are now, who knows? Well, I could tell you this, there is so many ideas that just, it, it, like you said, maybe 5%. You could have designed a thousand new cars at any given moment, but it's amazing to have you up here. If people want more information, because we haven't even scratched the surface, there's the art that you do. I mean, we could sit up here for two hours, but if people want more information about what you do, both in design and art, how would they find you? really simple. Uh, you can look at my website. It's CamilloPardo.com. Excellent. Carmillo Pardo right here. SEMA stage. We'll be back after this.